Welcome to another segment of ACRP TV. Today, our spotlight is on the future of decentralized clinical trials, a very important, timely topic. They've obviously gotten much more powerful and important since the COVID uh, the pandemic changed everything and the way we operate. So DCTs are apparently here to stay. We've got two guests who I think are pretty strong proponents of them and have some interesting perspectives. Leah Burgess is the CEO and president of High Road Strategy. She's an old friend of ACRP. We've talked many times in the past. Dr. Alexander Pashtuk is the C chief clinical officer with Vault Health. So I wanna thank you both for joining us today, Alex and Leah. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Let's jump right in and talk about, you know, one of the most important topics we're all focusing on these days is diversity. So maybe Alex, let me start with you. How do you think decentralized clinical trials can advance patient diversity and widen this tent to make clinical trial patient populations more diverse? Yeah, Michael, you know, I think that's, that's an extremely important question and very relevant, uh, especially given how few subjects get into trials, as, and, and in particular, um, a, a diverse enough subject, subject population to actually make the results of the trial relevant. So I think there are, there are really four ways in which decentralized trials can improve access to um, more diverse populations. One is, you know, a decentralized trial either limits the number of physical clinical sites or actually expands the number of total sites, meaning now you have access to individuals really in their homes using technology as well as an at-home based approach. You know, two, um, you are able to engage subject populations that historically have had poor or no access to healthcare and enabling what we would call clinical research as a care option. You know, for example, these would be government, government managed care populations, those under Medicare, Medicaid, and populations that just frankly have very limited ability to travel to clinical sites, whether that's to see their doctor or, you know, let alone to see their doctor or to participate in a clinical trial. Um, and historically, clinical trial sites have been major medical centers. And over time, that has kind of shrunk down to the point where now we're able to use technology as well as a disseminated group of clinical trial staff, investigators, and whatnot to reach these patients at the point of their, at their, of their preference. You know, and really three, and I misspoke when I said four, but, but three is partnerships with and across large academic centers, as well as smaller clinics. The use of technology, the use of um, decentralized trial platforms has facilitated that, making, making the use of physical clinical sites easier should the need arise for a subject to go there. Ellie, I'm sure you've got thoughts here. I know this is an important topic to you as well. Yeah, I think simply stated, it brings research closer to the patient populations that we want to serve. And it does it in a manner in which it's simplified, it's straightforward, um, and our patients understand um, what they're part of and how they're making a difference. So I think simply stated, it's the new way of reaching our patients uh, in their backyard. So let's talk about study startup. That's obviously a huge issue, and we've been sort of flatlining on that one, or it's, or it's gotten worse in some ways as, as protocols have gotten more complicated. There are various factors at play, but trial startup has been stubborn. How do you think decentralized trials can help speed study startup? Maybe go with Alex first. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, no, and, and I, I, again, that's, that's exactly the point, right? We're using technology to break down the barriers that you need to get studies started, right? So recruitment is a huge issue in clinical trials. Um, and part of the reason for that is having access to the right subject populations and then having those subject populations actually decide to engage in research, right? There are a lot of inherent frictions to that. So, you know, the ability to recruit and engage subjects virtually and in person at their point of, at their point of choice is huge, right? That reduces the reluctance of somebody to have to get on a bus, a train, a plane, or get in their car and go somewhere. Um, you know, access to subjects with continuity using technology is also huge. Now, this is a little bit less study startup and more of a, you know, how do you make sure that a subject who starts a study stays in the study and ends the study? You know, but I mean, historically, you'd have to have a small army of people picking up phones and calling people at a regular cadence that doesn't necessarily work well. I mean, we have much less intrusive and obtrusive technologies now to do that. Um, you know, and, and um, frankly, I mean, you know, you really only need physical sites for interventions at this point and advanced diagnostic requirements. So with the implementation of a strategic approach over a broad 
with a broad reach nationally and inter internationally using t technology and your people stationed in appropriate places, you get broader reach, faster, more efficient recruitment, better engagement, and a better trials process. I think the key for from the site perspective is adaptability and being able to plug and play where you may have gaps or needs or things happen. And I think an important element of this is the pandemic pivot that I've mentioned before is that, you know, the way that we do business, the way that we operate in clinical research administration operations is different. And I think the sooner that, you know, and I was a, I was a former 100% everything has to happen our site person uh, in the early 2000s. And I think from the perspective of looking up towards the future, I really do believe the future is here now and beginning to see how uh, sites can take advantage, whether it's a piece or part or whole of the decentralized trial model um, is one that really should be explored because I think it adds value, adaptability, um, saves time and ultimately saves resources. All right, so last question before I let you guys go. You guys know, you know, with PIs, principal investigators, the one and done phenomenon, it's been a challenge. PIs have been struggling in this industry that some get involved, they get overwhelmed, they leave because they frankly maybe didn't know what they were in for. And the churn has been a problem. Do you think decentralized clinical trials can help turn the tide there? I mean, what, I guess what I'm asking, what are the advantages from the PI perspective perhaps for decentralized clinical trials? So, so I'll, I'll take that one. Having been, uh, having been a PI on the academic side prior to, uh, prior to, prior to my current role and then and starting our clinical trials business. So one of my biggest frustrations as a PI was, was recruiting patients because really, I mean, when you think about it, Michael, you, you're, you're essentially sitting in your office, waiting people, waiting for people to show up in, in, in the most unsophisticated sense um, or you're, calling people based on a database search and trying desperately to get them into your trial. Um, I think a lot of that goes away with the decentralized approach for all the reasons that we've talked about today. The other big frustrations were in having to use a disparate group of systems to manage subjects through a trial in a way that never really quite worked. And you know, when we talk about decentralized trials today, we're, we're talking about a concept, but we're also talking about technology to support what is the human need and the human engine that powers trials. And that's not going to change. But ultimately, systems have been developed that smooth this process so much more from top to bottom. And that's from getting patients through the door, help, sorry, subjects through the door, helping them get through the trial, letting me as the PI watch this and intervene and engage as needed rather than having to you know bang my head against the wall not knowing a lot of critical things during the trial and um you know and, and helping them stay engaged and helping me stay engaged all right leah i'll give you the last word yeah sure thanks i appreciate it so the from the site perspective the very first thing that came to my mind is that the smaller groups within universities. So usually there's some groups that have more resources than others and they are interested, but it's difficult to hire a CRC, a data manager, a nurse to connect into a larger consortium or network. I think this enables the smaller groups or new investigators to do things at a swifter pace than they ever could before. And I think it then supports the larger groups to actually do more than they've been doing in the past. So it it's a win-win regardless of your size, but it really enables I think uh, the smaller groups to actually engage faster with clinical trials. It's got the makings of an exciting future. Hey, I wanna thank you both for joining us today, Alex and Leah. This has been our ACRP TV Spotlight on the future of decentralized clinical trials. We've been speaking with Alex and Leah. I wanna thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.